Yet I tell you this, I am the process. I am God and I am the goddess. I am the supreme being, the all of everything, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. I am the sum and the substance, the question and the answer, the up and the down of it, the left and the right of it, the here and the now, the before and the after. I am the light and I am the darkness that creates the light and makes it possible. I am the goodness without end and the badness which makes the goodness good. I am all of these things, the all of everything, and I cannot experience any part of myself without experiencing all of myself. And this is what you do not understand about me. You want to make me the one but not the other, the high and not the low, the good and not the bad. Yet in denying a part of me, you deny a part of yourself. And in so doing, you can never be who you really are. I am the magnificent everything, and what I am seeking is to know myself experientially. I am doing this through you, this moment and every moment. I am doing this through everything that exists. And I am experiencing myself as magnificent through the choices I make. For each choice is self-creative. Each choice is definitive. Each choice represents me as who I choose to be right now. Yet I cannot choose to be magnificent unless there is something else to choose from. Some part of me must be less than magnificent for me to choose the part of me which is magnificent. So too is it with you. I am God in the act of creating myself, and so too are you. This is what your soul longs to do. This is that for which your spirit hungers. My greatest desire is to experience myself as what I am. I can only do that in the space of what I am not. And so I have carefully created what I am not in order that I may experience what I am. Yet I am everything I create. Therefore, I am in a sense what I am not. I am what I am. I am what I am not. This is the divine dichotomy. This is the divine mystery, which until now, only the most sublime minds could understand. Be, and then do, and you shall have. First, you must be the thing called happy, or knowing, or wise, or compassionate, or whatever. Then you start doing things from this place of beingness, and soon you discover that what you are doing winds up bringing you the things that you've always wanted to have. The way to set this creative process into motion is to look at what it is you want to have. Ask yourself what you would need to be if you had that. Then go straight into being. In life, you do not have to do anything. It is all a question of what you are being. The person who just knows that if he could only have a little more time or a little more money or a little more love, he'd be truly happy. He does not get the connection between his not being very happy right now and his not having the time, money, or love he deserves. On the other hand, the person who is being happy seems to have time to do everything that's really important all the money that's needed, and enough love to last a lifetime. He finds that he has everything he needs to be happy by being happy to begin with. So deciding ahead of time what you choose to be produces that in your experience. Happiness is a state of mind, and like all states of mind, it reproduces itself in physical form. All states of mind reproduce themselves. So act as if you are, and you will draw it to you. What you act as if you are, you become. But everything you do, do out of sincerity, or the benefit of the action is lost. Natural law requires the body, the mind, and the soul to be united in thought, united in word, and united in action. You cannot fool your mind. If you are insincere, your mind knows it, and that's that. So whatever you choose for yourself, give to another. If you choose to be happy, cause another to be happy. If you choose to be prosperous, cause another to prosper. If you choose to have more love in your life, cause another to have more love in theirs. 
Do this sincerely, not because you seek personal gain, but because you want the other person to have that, and all things you give away will come to you. The very act of giving something away causes you to experience that you have it to give away. Since you cannot give to another something you do not now have, your mind must come to a new conclusion, a new thought about you is generated, namely that you have this or you could not be giving it away. This new thought then becomes your experience. You start being that. And once you start being a thing, you've engaged the gears of the universe, the most powerful creation machine in existence, your divine self. Whatever you are being, you are creating. The circle is complete, and you will create more and more of that in your life. It will be made manifest in your physical experience. This is the greatest secret of life. So if you give to another as a contrivance, a manipulation meant to get something to come to you, your mind knows this. You've just given a signal that you do not now have this. And since the universe is nothing but a big copying machine reproducing your thoughts in physical form, that will be your experience. That is you will continue to experience not having it, no matter what you do. Furthermore, that will be the experience of the person to whom you're trying to give it. They will see that you are merely seeking to get something, that you really have nothing to offer, and your giving will be an empty gesture. The very thing you sought to attract, you will push away. Yet when you give to something to another with purity of heart, because you see that they want it, they need it, and should have it. Then you will discover that you have it to give, and that is a grand discovery. All objective phenomena is drawn to you subconsciously. All events are created by you subconsciously. Every person, place, or thing in your life was drawn to you by you. It was self-created to provide you with the exact and perfect conditions, the perfect opportunity to experience what next you wish to experience as you go about the business of evolving. Nothing can happen. I say to you, nothing can happen in your life which is not a precisely perfect opportunity for you to heal something, create something, experience something that you wish to heal, create or experience in order to be who you really are. Who you really are is whomever you choose to be. Whatever aspect of divinity you wish to be, that's who you really are. But that can change at any given moment. Indeed, it often does, from moment to moment. Yet if you want your life to settle down, to stop bringing you such a wide variety of experiences, there's a way to do that. Simply stop changing your mind so often about who you really are and who you choose to be. Make your choice. Take your stand. Stand up. This is who I am. This is where I stand. This is why I stand. Make decisions with your soul. The choices of your spirit are always the highest choices. They don't need to be second-guessed. They simply need to be followed and acted on. But it is not uncommon for your body to want one thing while your mind seeks another and your spirit desires yet a third. And when your choices conflict, your body, mind, and spirit are not acting as one. The process of creation works at all of these levels and it will produce mixed results. If, on the other hand, your being is in harmony and your choices are unified, astonishing things can occur.